H looks ahead. In this episode, we visit with one of the SHTV originals, Nanor Pilibosyan in her Sijib. My second class of the day is Introduction to Arts and Culture. This is a class that introduces theater, as well as plays and theatrical concepts through many cultures. Follow along as the grade six students experience a day in high school. I'm really excited for high school because I think robotics class is very educational and programming and justifying learning. And profile the technological lifeblood of Surpagok, Hamlet Kiretian. I'm Mosata Brian and you're watching SHTV. Welcome to SHTV. I'm Mosada Brian. I'm Arani Pilibosian, and today's theme is the future. While no one really knows what the future holds, we're constantly thinking about what comes next for Surbagop and its students. In today's episode, we'll be exploring that idea. In the first segment, we'll see what it's like being a CGIP student in 2021. Hi, I'm Nanor Pilibosian, and I'm one of last year's Surbagop graduates. I'm a first-year student at Dawson College in the Arts and Culture program. I start my day by walking to the bus stop. The bus usually takes a 15 to 20 minute ride to the metro station. From there, I will take the orange line and switch to the green. My classes start at 10 a.m., so the metro is usually calmer by that time. I get off at the Atwater stop, and the college is right past the stairs, facing the Alexi Neo Mall. As soon as you enter the college, it is mandatory to sanitize your hands and get a surgical mask from the dispensers. My first class is my 103 French class, Esthétique du Scandale, where we analyze art and literature pieces that have caused scandals through the years by reinventing the concept of art. During my break, I meet up with friends and get a snack and coffee from the school's cafeteria. My second class of the day is Introduction to Arts and Culture. This is a class that introduces theater, as well as plays and theatrical concepts through many cultures. Currently, we are touching base on Japanese theater. Since that was my last class of the day, it is currently 2.30 p.m. and I will be retaking the metro back to the bus stop and eventually go home. we saw the first round of the Secondary 1 Kindness Challenge. This week, we'll be seeing the second round, where things pick up a little bit. Here's the second week of the Secondary 1 Kindness Challenge.
Thank you for teaching us. Thank you, Ani. grade 6 students look forward to is moving up to the third level to high school. Recently, they had the chance to spend half a day in the shoes of a secondary one student. Here's what they did. Hello everyone. Here are our grade 6 students who are visiting and living a day of high school. Today, they're entering six different classes each hour by learning new things and doing fun activities. The classes that they're visiting are Armenian, Art, science, and robotics class. So let's get into it. Science class is really fun in secondaire. Um, I really like it. Um, the experiences are really fun and they teach you a lot of stuff. It's really educational and I really love it. This project is exciting me for high school. I hope we always do activities like this. I'm very excited to come to this high school because I find the activities very uh, fun and interesting.
I'm really excited for high school because I think robotics class is very educational and programming is just a fun way of learning and while you're doing robotics you just feel like you're the brain of the robot. So I'm super excited for high school because high school is really different. It's really fun, really cool. So. I'm excited for high school because I get to see my brother and I get to try new things. Um, I'm really excited to go to secondary. It's gonna be a fun experience, I hope. I am really excited for high school because um, I saw the classes in secondaire and um, it was really. Um, and it was really nice. I really like it and I'm pretty excited for high school. So I'm basically really excited for high school because I saw the really cool activities and the classes were really nice. So. I really like the library because there's there's books and I love to read books and we play it with the computers. Our school seems to run because even though the work is a, is a, is a big step to take, from all, from all the activities that I've done so far, um, the time looks like here I say TV. I thought that high school would be really hard, but it is, but at the same time, there's fun things you can also do at high school. For example, science. Robotics, you think that that's, that's the bad? Or plastic? Um, and yeah, etc. Um, high school, actually, well, actually, I think it will be a nice future because at the same time it's hard, same time fun. We hope everyone enjoyed watching our grade 6 students visiting and living the life of high school. We loved seeing smiles on their faces. We hope they learned something from it and we hope they know a little bit more about high school. Thank you! One of the most important aspects of being a student is taking your education seriously. Recently, we got the chance to interview Talia Zabrayan, who is an alum at Surpagop, about her experience. Here's five questions with Talia Zabrayan. Hi, my name is Talia Zabrayan. I was a member of the graduating class of Surpagop in 2017. After I graduated, I attended Marianopolis College in the Law, Society, and Justice profile, and I'm currently in my third and final year at the University of Montreal studying law. What do you think Surpagop students can benefit from at our school that they cannot at other schools? Well, from an Armenian standpoint, first and foremost, I think because Supagop is an Armenian school, students have an opportunity here that they won't be able to get anywhere else, and that is to be continuously engaged with their language, their culture, their history, and to feel close to their Armenian identity. But that aside, I think one of the biggest draws and one of the biggest things that makes Supagop unique and why it feels so good to be a student here is that because we're not a huge school, Teachers have the ability to be very focused on the success of their students. The teachers here really want what's best for their students and they're able to be 
hands-on and make sure that their students are getting what they need out of the classes and that really translates into how the students feel when they come to school, when they go to class and how they succeed and achieve their goals. From your experience, do you think the school fully prepares their students for their future studies in college? I absolutely do. Um, I went to Marianopolis right after I graduated here and I felt, I experienced no culture shock whatsoever. I didn't find it difficult to transition to college life. And I'm sure for some people it is difficult just naturally leaving an environment they're very familiar with and going to an unknown environment. But for me, I think Supago made it extremely easy for me uh, for a number of reasons. But as I mentioned earlier, one of the biggest advantages a student gets from coming to Supago is how involved the teachers are in their success. And although that's not the case at all when you go to college and afterwards in university, I think the confidence that students get here because they know that they are backed by their teachers gives them the ability to then go out into college or university and feel like they're able to succeed regardless of someone if someone is backing them or not because of the amount of um, support that they received when they were here and the amount of validation that gives to their abilities and their talents and so i think that's a huge huge reason why success after surpago is easy for students who graduated from this school in your opinion why should all students stay at surpago until they graduate well, all things being equal, meaning if we take out the education level out of the question, because I truly believe that the education here is just as amazing as it would be at any other school and that the opportunities are just as endless here for students as they are at any other school. So that aside, um, I, know there, I know that some people believe that it's important for students, teenagers to branch out of their comfort zones, that it allows them to grow quicker, that it allows them to develop better. But in my personal opinion, um, I think it's really important for students to stay the course at Surpago because it allows them to be surrounded by people they've known their entire lives, to be in an environment that feels safe to them, to be in an environment that feels familiar to them throughout their most formative years. So when you're developing um, as a teenager, to be at a school where you know everyone, where everyone feels like family, um, and as I said, where you feel completely backed and supported by your teachers because of the fact that they've known you so long, because of the fact that they don't have so many other classes or so many other students to focus on, it's a huge advantage. Um, and I think that's a really big reason why people should stay um, at Surpago for their entire, the entire course of their secondary education and primary, obviously. What activities should students partake in at Surpago so that they'll be ready for the future? Um, great question. I think that there are a lot, a lot, a lot of extracurricular activity opportunities at Surpago or activities that are maybe projects that you don't see too often if you're just focused on your schoolwork or your homework or just getting through your day-to-day -day classes that are presented to students. Um, and I think that you should take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way for activities outside of just regular classwork. Uh, for me personally, I really always go back to two things that I participated in in my time at Surpago that really allowed me to be the student that I am now and to have the success that I'm having um, in law school. First and foremost is the William Saroyan public speaking competition um, that I was allowed to participate in um, because of my English class and Mr. Liu um, was our teacher at the time and he allowed us the opportunity to give our personal takes on a subject of our choosing and it really helped me develop my creativity, my self-confidence um, and it really allowed me to tap into my perspective on things which I think is a really good thing to do for students and finally, the fact that it was a persuasive speech is really helpful for me as I'm going into a profession that really is heavy on uh, being able to persuade others of your viewpoint. And then the second thing that I participated in at my time during my time at Supalo um, was the um, Right for Justice competition that the Bar of Montreal does every year. And I got an honorable mention in that contest, but I think the biggest takeaway for me was the ability to do something that I really love to do, which is write, but then to tap into the legal 
part of my brain, which I hadn't been able or allowed to tap into really before then. And so I really focus on my essay that I wrote about what I, what my vision of a free and just society would be to really guide my decisions now when I'm doing classes in law school, when I'm shaping my opinions, when I am giving my viewpoint. And so both of those were really, really beneficial to me. And so I think students should participate in things that they are, uh, that are at their disposal, but things that are really specific to their interests, things that they wouldn't get in regular class time, things that are outside of, let's say, math or French or history, things that are specific to them. Are you grateful that your parents made the decision to send you to an Armenian school? Um, I think it's one of my biggest blessings that my parents decided to send me to an Armenian school. Um, five years removed from my graduation, from my last class at Surpago, I realize now more than ever, not only how big of a blessing it was to be able to attend an Armenian school throughout my entire childhood and teenage years, but also how important it is. Um, because if I wouldn't have gone to Surpagop, I don't know how in touch I would have been with my language, with my culture, with my history. And I don't know how capable I would have been to transmit that to my uh, future children or to other members of my community or family or friend group. So I think my parents deciding to send me to Surpagop was a huge blessing. And I think that every parent that decides to send their child to an Armenian school is doing a huge an amazing service to the Armenian community, not only here, but worldwide. So I think it's really, really important. Not many people have the chance to learn three languages, but we at Surpago can. Technology is one of the most important parts of school and the future of society. There's one person who makes sure everything is working. Let's meet Hamlet Jirajian. At Surpagop, we've all faced tech issues and called in our trusty IT man to save the day. But have you ever wondered what he's like beyond that? Well, today's your lucky day, because this is Hamlet, the information technology consultant for Surpagop. Let's see what he's right up now, to. Now I'm actually prepping these iPads. Uh, this is the charge station for the iPads. I'm prepping them for primary level students. By the way. We see you running around every time. What do you really do for a school? This is not all I do. <laughs> uh, I make sure you guys have a healthy network, basically. This is a separate project. These are the iPads that we give in class so that the students can use. Uh, another example would be the, uh, the robotic text robots that we can label. So, I just make sure that everything is stable and running throughout the day so that the teachers and students can have a uh, connected experience and not have any problems with, the, with their networks. Sometimes we see you talking to the teachers around the school. Why do they need your help? Well, basically, uh, if there's any technical issues in or out of class, they message me or, or send a ticket and uh, I respond back as soon as possible and I actually go and attend the, the class and help them out in class to resolve the issue. So, how did you become an IT consultant? Years ago, um, I was actually leaning towards becoming an RCMP officer. Things didn't turn out the way I wanted to. So, my next option was always to um, to be in IT because I, lo I love technology. So my education actually in uh, computer sciences for like computers and networking. And uh, it actually opened a lot of doors, you know, and 
Like I, I basically started working for IBM, which is like the, one of the biggest firms in the world for technology. Coming out of the, I was actually in the reserves, as I mentioned last time, uh, for the Canadian Forces and uh, in the Blackwater Regiment. And the military was like a great experience. You know, there was some situations where it got funny, it got rough, hard to, you know, cope with, especially with the trainings. It's very, very uh, heavy on your body, physically. Hey. Hi, you guys again. Hi. Wait one second. How is it like being in the forces? Uh, like I said, the Canadian Forces was quite interesting. There were some situations where it was funny because you do stuff that you've never, never really done. I'll tell you a funny story actually, which my father didn't really like. I had my dad's camera in my, uh, my backpack when we were training. So I had to pass through a small ravine which was up onto the river with water. So we got, we got through that and you know, you're actually going through this with all your gear. So we get out of the water and I notice like with inside my actual boots or pants, they're like small leeches that were stuck to my, to my leg. So I needed to take those off and that was something that I had never experienced. So that was really shocking. And then I get home the next weekend and my dad asks, where's my camera? <laughs> That's when I remember that I forgot the camera in my backpack. So I surely opened the backpack, took it out and it was full of rust. He lost it, but I paid for it. <laughs> hey, quick question. Hey, you again. <laughs> How did you <laughs> Thanks again, Mr. Hamlet. for watching SHTV. We want every student to feel pride and joy when they think of their school. So here are some students expressing why they love SH. I love SH because it's my second home. My teachers are like my parents and my classmates are like my siblings. Here the students get to express themselves in different and unique ways. Also it brings us, our means, to, to grow and learn about our history and nation. SH is my family. I love Surpago because it is a place where I feel comfortable and the people surrounding me there are like a family to me. Also Surpago is a place where you can learn many life lessons and have fun at the same time. And so I will always cherish the unforgettable memories that I've created there with my classmates. I love Surpago because here we can learn about our culture, our heritage and our values. We can also speak our mother tongue, Armenian, without any restrictions in our hallways. And that is why I truly love coming to this school. I love Surpao because I get to spend quality time with my childhood friends. I can speak Armenian, my mother tongue. I'm constantly involved in the Armenian community. And I've made lots of unforgettable memories in this school. I love Surpago because it makes me feel at home. I love the environment with my friends. The teachers are so helpful. They help us prepare for our future and they support us with everything we do throughout the years. <laughs>